nine in total. And the bias comes out to be about 2%. That's about a 2% difference between negative 0.67 and negative 0.656. Um, so again, why aren't we using hedges G? It's more accurate. And that's a good question. I think we should be. But people are so accustomed to using it, uh, to using and naming Cohen's D that I suspect that's not going to change anytime soon. Some final considerations. As popular and as much as statisticians recommend that we use effect size estimates like Cohen's D or Hedges G, popular programs like SPSS don't even calculate it. It's very disappointing. It would be very easy for them to implement that in their program. Uh, but they don't do it. So we're left having to do it by hand or calculators. I'm going to create a calculator on the How To Stats website so that you can calculate Cohen's D and Hedges G and um, get those estimates um, right, uh, in, a, in a matter of seconds, just putting that in, into, um, into the uh, spreadsheet that I'm going to upload. Confidence intervals for Cohen's D are actually fairly complicated because you have to use a non-central T distribution, as argued by some people that have been published in, in reputable journals. Um, so it's not as simple as, as simply getting um, the standard error of estimate from the T or using a corresponding T uh, confidence interval. Uh, it's a little more complicated than that. You can convert eta squared into Cohen's D. So if you did a, a, a one, most people talk about eta squared in the context of ANOVA. So if you did an ANOVA with just two levels in one group, uh, so let's just say uh, IQ group one and IQ group two, uh, you can get eta squared in uh, and no, in SPSS, and then you can convert that into Cohen's D. Uh, something that people don't talk about a lot in Cohen's D is that uh, it assumes homogeneity of variance in the sense that usually we're pooling the two variances together, uh, or the standard deviations together, under the pretext that or under the assumption that they are not statistically different from each other. Uh, and I don't think there's a lot of research talking about, well, what do you do when the variances are different or the standard deviations are different? And I suspect what people would recommend is that you're just going to have to choose one. Choose which standard deviation you feel is the best representation of uh, whatever you're interested in. The last thing I'm going to mention, which is a little bit uh, specific and might be a little bit complicated, is about repeated measures designs and using an estimate of Cohen's D in this context. In my opinion, and then the opinion of others, it's not appropriate to convert eta squared into Cohen's D from a repeated measures design ANOVA. And that's because in the repeated measures T value, uh, if you're doing an ANOVA or a paired T test, uh, it takes the, into consideration the correlation between the time 1 and time 2 data. So that makes the t-value bigger. And in my opinion, that's not the way that Cohen's d should be used. Uh, p in my opinion, people want to know the standardized difference between the means that does not confound the correlation between time 1 and time 2 that is invariably present in, um, in repeated measures designs. Uh, so if you went to a doctor and that doctor said we can increase the IQ of somebody, let's say somebody had a subnormal IQ and they had a, a treatment or they had um, some kind of nutritional uh, supplement that was shown to increase IQ by a Cohen's D of 0.5, so 50% of a standard deviation, uh, you'd be thinking, oh, so that's about seven IQ points because the standard deviation in IQ test is 15. But if you did that on a paired sample t-test and you got a, and you converted the um, eta squared into d and it was actually a 0.85 or a 1.0, I'd be thinking, oh, a full standard deviation increase. But that's not true. That's not what the drug does. The drug only produces the effect that is based on Cohen's d that excludes the correlation. That it's a, anyway, there's a bit more complicated issue, and I'm going to put some references to the um, web page. I'm going to create a web page on this topic, and I'll have references talking about these different issues. And if you want to use uh, Cohen's D in the context of uh, including the correlation, well, you can have a citation for that. I, I don't think it's appropriate, but there are other uh, papers that talk about doing the opposite, and that's the way I do the. I endorse that myself personally. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching.